In this tutorial, we'll be going through generating a displacement map using our multi-displacer exporter 3 and generating a normal and cavity map using our Z mapper. So what I'll be using is this cliff tool that I have that on its lowest subdivision level is just over a thousand uh, polys and on its highest subdivision level it's close to a million polys. So the first thing we want to look at is generating a displacement. So what we're going to do is go to our Z plugin and our multi displacer 3 will be here and we're going to go ahead and rip this off and put this on our right palette. So in this exporter we have several options that we can set for our displacements. So the first one is get mesh info which will just give us how many tiles that we UV tiles we have on this current mesh and the poly count of each one of those tiles. Seeing that this is a single UV tiled mesh everything's under one tile. Now if I had this split off into four it would have gave me four bits of tile information. Create all is just the button we'll be using to when we need to generate our displacements. Create missing is used when we have a tiled UV mesh and when you have a tiled UV mesh and you hit the create missing ZBrush will go through and look at all four tiles in this case and look for ones that were not generated displacement for and generate the displacement map for that tile. Next you have a UDIM. Our UDIM setting at zero is an automatic setting which I recommend just to keep that on. And this is for tiled UVs telling you the number of tiles in the left or right of your um, mesh. Next you have your initial file index which is set in for your when file uh, name so if I was to name the displacement on this cliff, I would have cliff 1001. Now if I had four UV coordinates for this one mesh, then my um, maps would be cliff 1001, cliff 1002, cliff 1003, and cliff 1004. So for this tutorial, we're just keeping this at the setting it's at. Here next you have your resolution setting which is set at 2K which is perfectly fine for what we're going to be generating. And then you have your map size adjustment. It's setting this at 0 has no adjustment and setting at 100 is full adjustment. What it's going to do is if I did have a tiled UV mesh it's going to use make a resolution based off your UV coordinates. So if your UV settings aren't filling all your space, you might have a smaller resolution than a 2K on that particular space. So it's best to just keep this at zero and then for every displacement it'll generate a 2K map. Next you have our DP subpix which is used for generating the displacement. As you see it goes from zero to four. So if I set my DP subpix to 1, what I'm telling ZBrush to do is with this million poly mesh, subdivide it once before you generate a displacement map. Keep in mind this is done in memory, it's not actually done physically to the geometry, it's not going to subdivide right here on our canvas. So if 1 is selected on my DP subpix with a 1 million polygon mesh, seeing that ZBrush subdivides in multiples of four, it's actually going to be a four million poly mesh before it actually generates our displacement. And if I was to change this to two, now I'm telling it to subdivide it twice, so this one million will go to four million and then to 16 million. And keep in mind again, this is in memory before it generates the displacement. Another setting that you have is adaptive, which can be found in your tool palette in displacement and you have adaptive here. So if you click on adaptive what we're going to be telling ZBrush and we want to make our DP subpick zero is adaptive looks at the lowest subdivision level and the highest subdivision level and calculates the difference between the two to generate your displacement. So either or will generate a quality displacement. You'll need to play with and see which way is going to give you the best displacement for your map. So let's go ahead and just click on adaptive for now and have our DP subpix at zero. We'll have our border, paint border at eight. I've found no need to change this. Keep in mind too for DP subpix, the highest setting I've ever found necessary is two. I've never found the need to go to three or four. Now if I click on my export options, I get the exporter options now, which you notice there are many 
um, different options here. The first channel here is for a single channel grayscale displacement, either 32, 16, and 8-bit, which you notice you have that option for the next one, which is for a RGB or three channel, 32, 16, and 8-bit. Then you have a positive negative 32, 16, or 8-bit channel. Then you have a major minor um, channel for uh, displacements. And then you have a normal map settings. Now for normal maps, we're going to be using ZMapper later on in this tutorial. So the purpose of Maya, Maya needs an RGB channel, and we're going to generate a 32-bit channel. So many different programs will use different settings, um, positive, negative, or having a major minor. Uh, major minor settings is for programs that can only take in an 8-bit, and you use these both files to combine to generate a 16-bit within that rendering um, software. So let's go into the settings. So you have a status on or off. As you notice, if I turn this to off, now I can't play with any of my settings, and it's not going to generate the displacement for my 32-bit RGB. So I want to turn that back on. I can go and turn my D16 on. If you notice now, what's going to happen is if I hit my Create All button, ZBrush is going to generate two displacement maps, one three-channel RGB 32-bit and one single-channel 16-bit grayscale. So for Maya, like I said, we want a 32-bit RGB. The next thing you have is a quick code that you can copy and paste here. Once we have established the settings we want here, a code will be generated here that we can always just paste into our uh, exporter so that we don't have to play with our settings. The next thing we have is our channels, which is either one channel or three channels. And then, like I stated before, Maya will need a three-channel RGB. Then you have your bit settings, whether it's going to be 8, 16, or 32-bit. Let's going to generate a 32-bit. Then do you want to vertically flip, yes or no, your displacement file, which for Maya we will need to vertically flip our displacement going from ZBrush to Maya. Then we have a scaling factor, which we have a D factor, which is our alpha depth factor of the current mesh. Um, we have an auto setting, which is just taking the contrast, uh, the maximum intensity of the light and dark values to generate the displacement. Then we have a combination of using your alpha depth factor of the actual mesh and the auto setting. And then you have off, which will be there will be no adjustment made to your displacement. So for this uh, particular mesh, I found the AD factor works really well. The next two settings we have are smooth and seamless. Um, smooth will generate a algorithm smoothing to the, your displacement before exporting. And seamless is used for when you are going to be using smooth and also have a tiled UV um, mesh so that in between those tiles it's creating a good seamless flow between so you, when you take it to your renderer you won't have any lining. So I, for this particular mesh, and for most cases, I keep both of these off. Next, we have our channel ranges, which we have three channels, of course, with an RGB. And we'll have different ranges depending on the different application renderer that we're going to use. So for the purpose of Maya, we're going to need full range on all three. Next, we have our resolution setting for all three channels. For Maya, we're going to keep our resolution setting on full and not major or minor, but we want to have all three settings on full. So now that we've gone through and established all these settings, we now have a quick code that we can copy and paste later. So again, we want a three channel, 32 bit, vertical flip. We want an alpha depth factor scale on, no smoothing, no seamless. And we want to have our ranges on full range, and we want our resolution to be full for all of our resolutions. So now that we close this, we're ready to generate a displacement. And what we'll need to do first is subdivide down to the lowest subdivision level before we can actually generate a displacement. So now that we're on the lowest subdivision level, and we hit Create All, we're going to make this call this Cliff 2. It's going to ask me to replace, because I already had a file name of that. And we're going to go ahead and replace that. And then now, as you notice, it is generating a displacement for us to use in the Maya renderer. And there you have it. We now have a displacement for Maya.